actual Lunar New Year yeah. festival. Mm-hmm. That was February, right? Yeah, that was. Yes, yes. How was that? That was really fun. Um, because that was like you performing, right? Yes. Where You had to go to like a, a seat at the comfort of your own home. No, no, no. That was in a location. We went to... I. We could have recorded it anywhere. I could have done it in the comfort of my own home, but I wanted to do like a... a like a real visual. Yeah. Okay, like okay, I, okay. Everything that I do, I really... Um, I want it to be presented in a way that um, represents me. Yeah, yeah. So we went to a studio in Brooklyn. Um, we recorded it live. Um, oh, that's dope. Yeah, I had a band, like a small band, and then... Um, just a great cinematographer. Hakeem was there supporting, of course, my son. Shout out to Hakeem. <laughs> Mr. I don't want to be on camera. I'm only here for support. Yes, I got him. Yes, I got him. Yes, I got him. He's not, he's not coming on camera, but no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah, so they were there um, as support. Um, and it was big for me because I haven't performed in such a long time because of mm, COVID. Yes. And then also because I think... For the first time, like I felt like I was being represented by my own like people, of course. and it was a beautiful thing too because um, the Lunar New Year is a very important time for my family cult and like culturally for Asian people. Of course. Um, so it just for me it felt like um, an opening for good mm-hmm. luck, good fortune to mm-hmm. be you know an abundance for my life, mm-hmm. and then that's what ended up happening too. So I'm really happy that I got to be featured on. It was it's called the Joy Ruckus Lunar New Year Festival. Okay, yeah. is that an annual thing or is that like? Um... You know, actually, it is annual and it's actually global. It's yeah, so it's like um, they have artists from everywhere. They had really large Asian artists like from Korea, from Vietnam, oh, wow. all these and you countries. Got to... Yes. Sit, wow. I got to open dope. up for like a couple of like some big name artists. Wow. Yeah. Did that did that um, open up like to any other different opportunities outside uh, of that like, or within that? Like say uh, networking opportunities. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I you know when you network with like new people, like they they tell you about new things that you could you know um, pitch your stuff to. Mm-hmm. So like getting those kind of opportunities, I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't know. Like, I could pitch my song to a film festival, my music video to a film festival, do these things. So that's definitely, like, hopefully in the works and, like, hoping and praying that I actually get in the festival. And I think the reason why they they gave you those um, opportunities is because the way you went about the presentation. Yeah. They were like, okay, you see what she did? She could have did it right at home, but she actually went and got a studio, made sure that the presentation was right, so... Let's tell her about this because she's not playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's dope. I'm glad that you did that. Yeah. And that's that's amazing. Okay. We're going to have to get into something a little <laughs> serious. Uh-huh. You know, um, there's been a lot of ignorance uh, ever since COVID begun. Mm. And it was no thanks to number 45. Yeah. I don't like mentioning his name. I don't even say he was the president but you know i'll acknowledge he was number 45 yeah right and um he he misnamed nastily covid as the china virus Mm -hmm. and we we as intellectual people know that many of his followers were extremely ignorant hateful nasty people racist (laughs) very racist yeah very bigoted um and what we're seeing now with all the attacks with uh, within the Asian, co- not even within, from the outside towards the Asian collective, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to talk to you about it and see how you felt about it. Because you're, you were very vocal when you noticed racism from the Asian collective towards African collective. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I have to talk to you about it because... You like to hold people accountable whenever they're being inhumane, no right. matter who they are. Yeah. You know, so to see this and to hear the pride of your Asian culture coming from you, I wanted to ask you about, you know, this whole um, stop the Asian hate thing, white supremacy. And I just wanted to know, how do you feel during this time? Because I know you're very empathetic. We, we spoke yeah. about empathy <laughs> the first time around. So mm-hmm. how are you feeling through this whole this whole thing? You know, it's actually...